Aloha, everyone. This is uh, Think Tech Hawaii, and this show is uh, the, the uh, politics for the people, and uh, we're uh, weekly on this day. We have guests joining us to be a panel uh, to discuss the topics uh, of this show, uh, which, as you may have guessed, are politics. All right, I'd like to welcome Jay Fidel to this show and also Tim Apicella and Winston Welch. We are uh, ready to talk about the politics and the, the activities of yesterday and all those that affect them. So Jay, I wanted to start with you by asking, we all know about the disappointing outcome of the Senate's vote yesterday for the voting rights bill. And uh, I'm, I'm wanting to know if you think in contrast to the fact of the matter that it was a disappointing result, what are the uh, positives about it? What, what, what is an advantage of, of having had that vote? Is, are there any advantages? It's like getting beat to with an inch of your life for exactly what are the advantages in that. Uh, I, and I, I don't see any advantages, Stephanie. Maybe these other guys uh, you know, see an advantage. I, I see only defeat. And uh, and I and I, you know and the, the newspapers, especially Winston's uh, links that he sends around, um, you know, are trying to make um, a, a silk purse out of what is a sow's ear. What happened yesterday is a sow's ear. On the other hand, I have to say that it was entirely, completely predictable. And you had all these commentators saying, no, 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 it's, you know, something will, a miracle will happen. This be some miraculous turn of events. No. No, uh, mansion and cinema, you know, the, our item together, they they voted with the, the GOP and, and that was very clear that was going to happen and it did happen. And so um, no voting rights bill for us. Uh, the notion of uh, breaking it all down, both in uh, Biden's build back better and in voting rights is really a long shot. I think um, you know he's lost credibility. He's lost power and influence in the, in the, if he had any anyway in the Senate. He's never going to get anything through. Uh, they want to embarrass and humiliate him. They want to make him look foolish and impotent, and they've done that. So I don't know what's left. Maybe these guys have a better idea, but I don't know what's left for him to do. And then he gets up yesterday and talks about Ukraine, and he makes this sad sack statement about, yeah, Russia's going to invade Ukraine. Before you know it, everybody is back backpedaling on what he said, and then he tried to backpedal on what he said. It was a, an era. It was an era of judgment, an era of uh, thought process era, I think. And so what we have there is, um, you know, uh, you take all these things together. It was a bad day for Biden. Uh, and I think people are really wondering if he can make it through. Well, thank you, Jay. That uh, I, that is uh, what we saw. But what we also heard was that even though we knew they knew those uh, engaged that the Senate was not, that the vote was not gonna be happy. And uh, nevertheless, Schumer decided and the Democrats to go ahead and have it anyway. So there were some discussions about that tactic. And I'm just trying to probe into what it was that they saw was positive about it. So Tim, can you, can you dig in and see why th th he, they went ahead with it, given the absolute assurance that they were gonna fail? Well, the, the official line was we want everyone to go on the record on how they vote for this voting rights on the record, rather than commentary, rather than statements in the hallways of Congress. Um, so they got that. They got on the record exactly who wanted it and who didn't. And so uh, how will that be used? Um, hard to say. Maybe become election time. They'll use that against them. Um, you know, uh, I'd say I'm out of words because um, it, that's the only purpose it served. So you think that it might be, Tim, something to draw on during the election to show that that they what that they they belied their previous vote or that they're bad people or well, what is well, that? Well, yeah, I, basically that's why they wanted to go on the record. Um, you know, if it was Donald Trump, he'd you know, have these conversations either on the open microphone or behind doors saying, 
I'm going to primary you. If you don't vote my way, I'm going to primary you and you'll wish that you hadn't crossed me. Uh, you know, the old President Johnson way of getting things done. Um, it's, you know, it's a, it's, it's a bad look to say that um, you, you've got the House in your palm, you've got the Senate in your palm, and you're the executive, and you can't whip two votes to get some, you know, landmark legislation done. What does that say about the administration? And it says that you're weak and ineffectual, and that's exactly how he's come off. So, okay, now we have the record of who voted which way, and will that be used against them uh, during the primaries? Who knows? I mean, Joe Manchin is so popular with the Republicans in West Virginia, it probably doesn't really matter. And um, Cinema is probably going to be on the way out. She will probably be primaried and, and not be successful, but we'll, time will tell about that one. Interesting. Okay, thank you. All right, Winston, this, um, this question um, is one that looks to uh, who, it, who it was that was going to gain from having this vote. And the title of this program is, you know, what the Democrats plot next steps, you know, after this disastrous vote. So I'm going to try, I'm going to ask you for, for your agreement or disagreement, or if you see some other facts here that we're, we're overlooking uh, on the question of why did they do this? Why is this strategy? Why did that, they stick the strategy and didn't come to terms with reality? And I'm not exactly sure because we knew the outcome of it before it was going to happen. Um, apparently, they put Kamala Harris uh, in charge of the Senate just in case it was a, a tie-breaking vote. But I think it was a foregone conclusion that it wasn't going to be. So I think perhaps it was just um, to show that this uh, was pure obstructionism on, on on the part of the Republicans. I'm not sure why. Other other than that, what the purpose of this was is to just have people go on record saying they're against this, that, and the other. What it does point to now is the need for um, uh, many articles that have that have said, you know what, Joe Biden is, uh, and yes, as Jay says, uh, um, I might tend to be a little bit uh, Pollyannish or. Um, uh, um, happily naive. Um, that's okay. When uh, when we're looking at what he has accomplished in the last year, just Google what has Joe Biden accomplished in the last year, and look for the positive articles. We got enough of uh, the naysayers uh, where it, it, it's like it says, uh, you know, on. I, I, I was looking at something that's uh, you know Fox and. Uh, Donald Trump saying, you know, they're, they're lockstep and, and saying how terrible it is and how awful it is. You know, the reality is we're at uh, most jobs created under any president in his first year. Unemployment's at 3.9 percent. He said some major bills passed. We have a sane, calm, wise person. Has he made failures? Yes. Has he made missteps? Yes. But he also said, you know what? And, he, and he's, he's, he's frank with the people. This is one thing that uh, even Fox News uh, carried in, uh, an article on their website, which um, we should be looking at all news sources and seeing what they're saying by Kevin Walling, uh, which came out today. He says Biden gave a command performance at his press conference. He was forceful, direct, self-deprecating and earnest on Wednesday. He says that is in their commander in chief, someone willing to speak with uh, the American public like that. And he said uh, his longest press conference from a president in recent history. And he uh, went over what he, um, he, you know, wh where his failures were and where his successes were, and then outlined a new strategy. I mean, he was also pretty frank on Ukraine, which I thought was um, uh, was welcome. He he. It says that basically this is what he needs to do. And we talked about this yesterday. He needs to take his case directly to the American people in the weeks and months ahead, as he's indicated. He's still here. He's not going anywhere. He's got three years more in his term. And I think this first year, given the enormity of the the uh, uh, difficulties that he faced when he took office, you know, he he's also let's not forget trending above where Donald Trump was a year into his term. I think Donald Trump was at 35% or 38% or whatever it was. This gentleman is maybe at 45%, but do we really need to uh, 
pay attention to the polls that much on this for, for something, you know, does he need an hourly blip meter to see how he's doing? I think we can take him on the whole of how he has uh, stabilized our nation and made it a, um, a, at least a place where we can have discussions where, you, you know, I, 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 I'm remaining hopeful and optimistic uh, despite some, uh, you know, missteps to uh, in his first year, I think that we have a lot to go yet. And I think that Joe Biden is reassessing what he needs to do. He's going to come out um, with a lot of different ideas and strategies from now working across the aisle. He doesn't have another he doesn't have any other choice. I mean, and across the aisle, I mean, specifically also to Joe Manchin and Kristen Sistema. Okay. Yeah. Well, th thank you for uh, uh, kind of calming the waters here and getting a little balanced in the view of him. And I wanted to go over to Jay to, to ask about this coming out and talking more with the people and showing himself as, as Winston's saying, as a unifier, peacemaker, and trying to tout the accomplishments, get those in people's heads. But Jay, do you think that's a good idea for him with his agedness and slipperiness of his speech sometimes? Or, or do you think there's other ways he should be uh, communicating the, or promulgating you know, his successes? What do you think? Is that going to get him anything more? In well, the to, ask, to, to answer that directly, um, I, don't, I was thinking about this in anticipation of the show. And, and my, my gut is that Joe Biden doesn't have an organization. He doesn't have a national following that acts on his command. Now, Trump did, um, maybe to some extent he does now. Um, he does now, um, but Biden doesn't. And, and you know, if you ask that question that the uh, Washington Post asked, uh, and the Washington Post said, you know, he's got to speak to the people and all this, and, and every, he's got to tout his successes and all that. Um, and I think the solution is to get other people, millions of other people, to speak for him, um, to develop a, a, you know, a national effort among the Democrats. There are plenty of Democrats who need to be activated, who need to get into the media, into the legislatures, uh, into the courts. And I don't think he's doing that. It's like a one man band and that doesn't work. And not for him. It doesn't work for him. Um, the, the other thing, you know, I, I wanted to say is that, um, you know, Joe Biden has, you know, he has to, I've, I've written a commentary about this. He has to figure out who's going to be in the ticket next time. Uh, right now, it's, it's kind of this, uh, the, this shuffling toward uh, the end of his term with uh, these vague suggestions that maybe, you know, he'll run. And um, we, he does not instill confidence. I'm sorry. And I was going to say in response to Winston that, you know, it's not what you did for me last month or, or months ago. It's what you did for me yesterday. Uh, it's, it's your trajectory. And I'm afraid to say that Joe Biden's trajectory isn't good. It's, it's trending down, not only in the polls, but in his success factor. He's been less successful every time you look. He's made more, you know, chess move mistakes, strategical mistakes. I don't understand he's got all these smart guys, but he's nevertheless making what are identifiably mistakes. So I don't think we have a president who can hold it together. I'm afraid to tell you that. And of course, he's a decent, honorable, honest man, and he should have our support. Um, but but the political reality is, what have you done for me today? And are you strong? Um, and can you sustain the effort? And do you have an organization or people shouting for you from the bleachers? Answer, no. Well, one take is that he had advised Obama and he, he saw that in the Obama administration, there hadn't been enough going out and telling people about what they've done and that he may be, you know, trying to make that up in, in his presidency. But your points are very good and he needs to do exactly what you're saying. And can he do that through in the circuits? He has like that. Cat I, well, but, you know, uh, now, you know, David Brooks, David Brooks appears on PBS, the news hour for years now. David Brooks has been a star reporter for The New York Times, a columnist for decades. Okay, David Brooks is very, con you know, I say conservative. I mean, he's thoughtful. He's moderated. He doesn't jump to conclusions. He does, he's not shrill in any way. Uh, sometimes uh, it bothers me to listen to him because he's so 
soft. But David Brooks wrote an article, a commentary, an opinion piece yesterday, which was something along the lines, uh, you know, let's look carefully at how this country is doing. And uh, this is not his words, but it was very similar. It's coming apart. And he talks about aggressiveness. He talks about the divisiveness. He talks about violence. Um, he talks about insurrection-minded people. Uh, people have no faith in the government or in Joe Biden or in, in democracy. Um, that's the article he wrote. That's a real shockeroo from David Brooks. So, um, you know, you can argue with David Brooks and say, no, well, what is he talking about? It's not like that. It's much better. There have been successes in the Biden administration and so forth. And there's, you know, more jobs and less unemployment and all that. But David Brooks' article, to me, is the canary in the coal mine. And we all want to take a look at that and see, you know, what's really going on in this country. And it, it points to the kind of thing that we have been, we here on Think Tech have been talking about as a possibility of connecting the dots. It is not a good future. Every metric I can think of, every, every meaningful metric I can think of is consistent with David Brooks. Well, Jay uh, is uh, went to the big time, what's the next steps for the Dems and uh, recommending that that ticket question be resolved soon. But um, moving on to Tim, um, do you think that the voting coming up in 22 is going to be affected by the legal shade or, you know, the growing civil suits? against uh, the former president. Do you see that having- any Well, I, I could see the Democrats trying to position it that way because they think that's going to get them votes. It's almost like the criticism of Donald Trump. Uh, that doesn't get you anywhere anymore. Uh, it's, it's like Jay would say, that's old news. Um, you've got to show what we've got around the corner, what's on the, uh, the immediate horizon that it's going to improve the lives of Americans or, um, okay. or establish, you know, voting rights again, uh, democracy. Uh, but to to focus your your efforts on elections and the winning of seats in the House on on the horrible things that occurred for January 6 is a really bad strategy. Again, show us what you're for, not what you're against. And um, I think if they follow the January 6 uh, formula, and all the horrible news that will come out of that and all the proof that finally has been um, ascertained, uh, it's not going to win seats. It'll lose more seats. So if I was the Democratic Party, I'd say we've got to get something done with Build Back Better. OK, forget it. One point seven five trillion done, gone. Can we get it done for a trillion? Can we get it done for nine hundred billion? What will Joe Manchin support? What what's the dollar amount? What's the programs? Strip it out. Um, you know, break it up. What will he support? And let's get it done. Yeah, it won't be anything like the original $3 trillion that we wanted. And, uh, but at least it's something. Same thing with the voting rights. Um, what can we strip out of this thing and break it up so that we can get Republicans to come over to the other side and vote for it? Again, Mitt Romney made it pretty clear that he was interested in trying to work something out. So let's quit being so partisan. Let's be bipartisan, break it up and find the compromise that we need to find. Those will be accomplishments for the Democratic Party that will help preserve seats in the 20, 2022 uh, election. But if they don't do that and they, 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 they don't find new accomplishments, they're doomed. Well, I noticed you said that, that if they do that January 6th strategy, that that will lose. That'll lose. It's not a winning strategy. It's just not winning. And you're saying these other strategies are positive and showing what they've done. Show me accomplishments. Yes, show me accomplishments. Show me what this administration can do and how it's going to make my life better or give me some assurance that we still have our democracy. But tell me, you think there isn't going to be reaction or anger or discontent when, when all of that information comes out about this insurrection? And well, this of course. I mean, of course, it's going to have an impact on the voter populace. Yes, the answer is yes, but if that's your primary strategy, it's a losing strategy. It's an ancillary strategy, as far as I'm concerned. It will help uh, voters get motivated because they'll be, I hate to say it, but they'll be pretty upset. They'll be angry. But we already know what we know already in the news of what all the different um, 
points that Donald Trump and his uh, henchmen took to try to overthrow a free and fair election. We know what that is. It's, it's now old news. Now we're just trying to prove that which we already know. And so it won't be new news. Well, that, that, is, that is interesting. Thank you yeah, for, for helping us see uh, how to strategize for something like this. I mean, you're still saying that that, that bad news from the January 6th can support you know that yes but uh, support a winning strategy not be the sole strategy and think that's going to win the day for you and you save seats in the house of representatives it won't all right well um do you think anybody's telling biden that where's he getting his information you have any sense of it I, you know i don't know where he's getting his information where's the dnc and all this where's their you know where's their policy uh ideas on how to win the 2022 I don't know what's really taking place behind closed doors of what uh, President Biden is hearing or not. Um, I would hope that he's hearing a, a voice of reality and maybe think Tech Hawaii can uh, call him up someday. Do that someday. Let's give it a try. Okay, Winston, um, for uh, some news that is new, we hear from the January 6th committee um, that they've, they, they've decided to nicely invite the past president's daughter, Ivanka, to come in and tell them all about what it was he was doing that day uh, when we had an insurrection. Winston, do you think this is a winning strategy? Do you think she's coming? Um, uh, this is the lady that that orchestrated the the Bible um, showing in front of the church and clearing out <laughs> of the, the square with tear gas. She carried the Bible in her in her handbag. Um, I don't think she's probably going to show up willingly um, and she'll probably be held in some sort of contempt. But what will that do? I don't know. I, I mean, th th what's interesting, though, and uh, is that we, while we talk about the courts and, you know, everybody wants it's an activist court if it's doing what you don't want it to do. Yesterday, though, they rendered a decision that says Donald Trump has no um, right to exert executive privilege over those documents, and they ordered the National Archives to turn over relevant documents to um, the January 6th Commission. So, you know, there's another opinion that was in the, the, the Washington Post, six ways to counter authoritarians ahead of the midterms. We're going to see a lot more articles like this. This is where civil society kicks in, where we say where and that can be done in tandem with a sane, um, unified Congress, as unified as it's going to get and say, what are common sense things that we can do so that we don't have chaos at the end? Now, that assumes that you have good people on the other side, but their first oath is to the Constitution of the United States, not to their party. And while they might twist something and say, well, this is uh, the only way we can see this, Tim is right. We've got to strip down these bills to what is supported by everybody. And the Democrats came in with some very ambitious and progressive ideas when the nation was in the middle of reeling from COVID, reeling from four years of Donald Trump, and, and, and all of the, the chaos that that had, uh, it, was, it was probably too big of a chew at the time. And I think it, it, that's what we've been shown. Apparently, Joe Manchin went to the, the White House in December and said, this is what I'll support. And surprisingly, a lot of it was uh, a lot of money for climate change uh, initiatives, which did take me uh, by surprise. So it may, he may not be um, as easily pegged as we think. And I, I know Jay has said he thinks he's you know, a bad actor, but let's assume that he's not. Then we go back to him and we say, okay, you write the bill. What, like Tim said, maybe it's 900 billion, whatever it is, let's get it through. Uh, the same for voting rights. What What is it that we can all agree upon that just, it's not voting rights that are so much the issue as how we count the votes at the end of the day and how we certify them. And to make sure that the people who are counting and certifying are following standard rule of law that is laid out clearly right before them. And any challenges that, that need to be made to these laws that have been passed across the country need to be made right now. Uh, there's not waiting till tomorrow. So if Joe Biden's um, administration doesn't do it, then let other organizations in the civic sphere take on these challenges before uh, before it's it's uh, it's too late. And it's, and, and it's in some ways already too late, but I think they can show 
more than just cause to get involved in this. That they, he can do that with cinema and mansion, that they would go along with these new rules? I don't think they, they, he doesn't need to. He needs to ask, the, uh, or maybe his Justice Department probably is already looking at this. I'm not, I, 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 we don't hear a lot from Merrick Garland uh, or a lot of people in this administration. And I think that's what, what Tim was saying. And 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 Jay is is let loose these great communicators that you had. Uh, let loose the Pete uh, Buttigieg and uh, Buttigieg's and all the, the the folks that you know the Amy Klobuchar's and 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 have them be more more noisy than um, than not. Let's get AOC out there again. Uh, she she her message deserves to be heard. So then people are thinking, oh, wow, wow, that sounds pretty far out there. So maybe, uh, you know, an Amy Klobuchar sounds pretty reasonable to me, you know, when you're uh, says, OK, well, we're going to have you. Know, uh, and that's the type of thing that we need. We need where's the DNC? Great question, Tim. We need to see a concerted, massive PR campaign that lets us know we're way better off having a sane, stable, accountable um, government uh, led by a president who's the same. All right. Thank you, Winston. Um, Jay, I want to go back to the strategy question. Um, we already have discussed that with regard to Schumer and the, and the Dems and what they did yesterday. But it so happens that, of course, in all of this, all of these legal concerns about Trump and the civil suits that are developing, his response to that is to be oppositional and deny and say he's innocent. And so this is the constant rant over, across all of everything that he's been charged with. And uh, is that still a winning strategy? What is that strategy and how is that supposed to be helpful to anybody? Is, is there Tell me what that means. Mm, you bet it's a winning strategy. And you forgot the, the other D word, delay. Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, this is this is a well-orchestrated plan. It's a war um, against the Democrats. It's a war for power, for insurrection, for coup. We can never forget that. And, you know, if you assume some sort of goodwill, good faith uh, among the GOP, it's not there. It's not going to be there. That's why I say, well, you can break these bills down uh, on the assumption that reasonable people, uh, you know, will vote for part of it. OK, well, they're not reasonable people. They're at war. And if they if they even if their inclinations are not to do that, Trump has got them cowed into this primary threat. So we're not going to see any real cooperation from them on anything. And as a group, as an organized group, they don't care about the future of the, con the country or the democracy. They're only interested in beating the Democrats, taking complete power, and elevating Trump or some other autocrat into a position where he can do what he wants. The, the Reichstag, ladies, is burning right now. Um, <clears throat> so I, I don't know if there is a strategy yet. As I, as I said before, I think that Biden has to develop a national effort with the DNC. He's supposed to be the leader of the party, right? Among other things. And I don't think he's leading the party. <clears throat> and there's some kind of chair or president of the party. He's not doing anything either. And I don't necessarily mean that you get up on TV and you make some you know, statements and try to whip people up uh, on national TV. That, that's what our politics has become. Um, you know, statements on national TV, try to make a good speech and talk to all the people uh, uh, all over the country at the same time. That's not the good strategy. You got to get into the communities, the neighborhoods. You got to talk to people who you might convince otherwise. I mean, the liberals, they're, you know, they're, they're going to do the same thing, but they're not motivated. And the people in the base, they're really hard to change their minds. But that's what's got to happen. This politics has to go back to what Tip O'Neill said. All politics is local. And, and the Biden administration has to find the hinterland and talk to them and you know, not let them off the hook and explain to them that the country is slipping down, you know, the proverbial slope. And that's the if you ask me what the you know the strategy should be, I think that's what it should be. But it's a long shot whether this administration or the Democratic Party as it presently exists can pull this off. 
So, you know, send your money to Switzerland. What can I say? Hey, all right, Tim, I had one more question I wanted to ask. We've got a little bit of time left, uh, not much, but um, just a little specific. But can, can, what did the January 6th committee think that Ivanka would do? Would, would that person as a, as a witness or coming in to talk, or is she going to turn her father over? What, what's, what do you think? Well, you know, before you can subpoena someone, you've got to show that we asked them nicely. Uh, you don't go directly to a subpoena. You, you know, it's a, it's a multi-step process. So you ask them nicely, you know they're going to say no, and then you go to the next step. Uh, it's a check, you know, it's a check mark basis. Thanks. All right. Well, uh, Winston, to finish up here um, in your comment, um, is it likely she would ever say anything against her father? I mean, how? Why? I'm I'm questioning the expectation of the committee that they can get anything out of her or put her in that position. What do you? I think it was the same as the vote taken yesterday. It's a foregone conclusion. They just want to say no one's cooperating for the better betterment of the nation. You know, and one thing I. I when Jay lays out his case, it's very compelling. Uh, David Broder, yeah, the, the canary in the coal mine. And that was a, uh, for our gentle viewer, January 13th, America is falling apart at the seams. I'm sorry, David Brooks, Brooks. Uh, article. And, uh, you know, what, what we have with um, Joe Biden, he's never been the great communicator. He needs to unleash that communication force that he has all around him. He can sit back, like he said yesterday, they don't. Ex he's been too too senatorial. Um, he's been too too much fighting f his own party just to get scraps. And he said, the people don't expect him to be president senator. They expect him to be president. And I thought that was that's a that's a great admission from somebody who can step back and say, yeah, I'm not I'm I, I'm not really succeeding in this area. And so I'm going to change my tactic. And I think we can look out for some change tactics in the uh, weeks and months uh, and years ahead, because we do have him for years. And uh, we can help by continuing our discourse at Think Tech and in their, our living rooms and with our friends. Um, but Jay does make a compelling case, I have to say. And when I'm at my pessimistic point and assume that this other, <laughs> the other um, uh, forces here are, are uh, reasonable actors, uh, I sometimes question my, um, you know, optimism. But nevertheless, I still <laughs> want to hold out hope that, uh, that things will turn out for the better. And as we plod along and these revelations are made, we will collectively regain our sanity as a nation. Yeah. That note, yeah, we'll close. Okay, thank you, Winston, and thank you, Tim Apicella and Jay Fidel for being on the panel and contributing to this show. I'm Stephanie Stoll Dalton, your host, and we will be back next week, same time, same day. Uh, thank you very much for viewing, and aloha. <laughs>